Hey guys, today we have another custom mechanical keyboard build, and this is the Alpine 65 from Bitmap Studios. First up, really nice hard carry case, always, always is a great inclusion, protects the board through shipping as well, and super clear this was an early unit, so some small things may differ, um, which I'll point out, and along the way I did receive some updated parts to more truly reflect what the final keyboard is like. And that includes the updated plates and foam. Alrighty, here's the actual board. I have the e-white version with the old plate still inside. And there were a bunch of colours available and polycarbonate too. Here's the top aluminium piece. We have our six spots for the plate tabs. Pretty equally spaced, but the top right tab is brought in a bit. No screws for the plate as this is a gasket mounted board. And there's a few alignment holes and pins, but otherwise nice and clean. In the initial phases, this bit was quite a bit more complicated, but uh, in the end we got this sweet simple engraving which we will fill in. So you know what, let's do that right now. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Probably what most people do is do the fill in and wipe away method. This video by Dodo goes through something like that, pretty easy. Paints, most accessible would be just simple acrylic paints for art that you can find anywhere. They are usually water-based, so you can thin them down if you want, because they are pretty thick. What I like to use are airbrush paints, so let's hit up the local hobby store. Now these are paints from Vallejo, very common in hobby stores and easily acquired online and pretty cheap. But what I do like about these is that they're in these small bottles that you can just drop paint straight out of. And they're thinner and flow pretty good. And yeah, look at all these colours. To be honest, I didn't really know what I wanted at the time, but I picked up some silver and grey. Acrylic won't be the most drillable though, but it'll be, it'll be the easiest to work with because you can literally clean it away with water if it is water-based. So no, you won't need some sort of cleaner. Um, something like an enamel paint will be stronger and more drillable, but to clean it off you will need something that thins enamel, uh, which may potentially affect the finish. I just went with silver, and basically I'm just spreading it by tapping around, uh, which again is pretty easy here because of how high the walls are. Acrylics also won't, they won't adhere super well, especially without primer, so you can kind of scrape away mistakes, but yeah, there's many ways to do this. This is just a loose guide on what I do. Sometimes I use a syringe, but yeah, it's, it's not complicated and there's no there's close to no consequence with acrylic. Alright, that's done. Back to the board. Here's the bottom piece, and we can see the raised bits where the plate rests on, or gaskets rather. They protrude pretty high up relative to the rest of the wall of the case, and there's decent space in between them, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Internal screws for the weight, with the nice big alpine engraving, and yeah, this is beautiful to me. It's quite sizable and hefty, coming in at 829 grams, which is it's as much as like a full-size pre-built keyboard, but the shape is a little unusual, for sure a bit more complicated than most weights that we see. Here's the PCB designed by Gondo. It features kale hot swap sockets, as it is a hot swap board, and has per switch RGB backlighting with these big SMD LEDs. Okay, I chucked in the stabs because no one likes watching stabs, eh? Uh, Jurok V2s by the way, so the wires shouldn't pop out. And here's the updated foam that will ship with the final unit. It's more, it's more soft and flexible foam and compresses quite a bit, uh, very typical stuff, but quite different to the original EVA which was harder and stiffer, so that should change the sound and feel. The mid foam piece is optional by the way, always a tough choice on whether to use it or not, since it does take a good amount of work to change it later, even when it's hot swap, but since I have it, I'm gonna use it. And here's the updated palm plate I received. Other plate options included good old aluminium, brass, and FR4, all with very different characteristics. 
Pond being plastic and being flexible should provide a less harsh bottom out and more flex. For the gasket pieces we have two thicknesses and this is where experimenting and personal preference come into play. I was recommended to try just a bottom gasket configuration so I thought I'd use the thicker gaskets to somewhat compensate for not having anything on the top side of the plate. In theory, having just one side with gaskets means slightly more space and therefore less initial compressions on the gaskets themselves. Sometimes we see gaskets being far too compressed and nearly defeating the purpose of them and by having them on the bottom rather than the top, we dampen that bottom out as we press downwards. Okay, let's chuck in some key switches. I grabbed some lavenders from Daily Clack here in Australia. These are another JWK linear, gotta love them. And small shout out to Cordal Keys too. How pretty is Rujin? Hey mate, straight up so good. Being hot swap, we have a completely fixed layout, 6.25U spacebar, no ISO, and yeah, hot swap, too easy. Just make sure your pins are straight and you should be good. It was all pretty easy to put together, switches went in fine with the foam which I measured to be about 4mm so pretty packed. Uh, again it was optional and if you want a less muted sound then leave it out. We also get a bottom foam piece to fill up more space and again optional. And even with the bottom gasketed, we can see that it's pretty tight, but we can also see that compression the foam gives. I did try this with all the foam uh, gasket on the bottom and top, and it was pretty tough to close up, but we'll talk about that later. And here is the beautiful Alpine 65. I really wanted to go for a cold alpine sort of vibe and aesthetic and I saw EPPT grey on white in stock on KBD fans and in the pictures at least the grey was super light which I thought would be interesting but unfortunately they're way darker than what's shown. And then you run into the other issue with an e-white finish, the matching of whites. Pretty rookie move by me but the caps are quite warm while the e-white finish has a cooler tone. So to break it up a bit, I chucked in some aluminium caps also in cherry profile which is sweet. I'll do a build with a full key set in the future. And they somewhat match my silver infill which doesn't look too bad. I went with kind of a marbled swirly look to give it some texture and just to experiment. It's well done, um, it just doesn't really match the flat alu silver. Anyway let's get back to the Alpine 65 which of course is a 65% keyboard but the right side cluster is offset like so. With the arrow keys connected to these three keys, uh, which by the way can be anything as it is programmable via VIA, it does visually differentiate from other 65% boards and it's always good to have differing characteristics in layout too. Personally I think it looks cool although I don't really have strong preferences for, for this sort of thing. Bezels are pretty thick also to give space for that offset cluster so that right hand bezel is thinner than the left which I, I only noticed when writing this. Looking at the side profile we have a 6.5 degree incline, pretty normal. A simple look here but we have large chamfers that extend to the front as well so we kind of see the screw holes although only from a distance. Now to the rear we see that arc of the weight and has the Alpine branding, pretty sweet. And then here, yeah, I think it's pretty. It covers a good chunk of the bottom and again it's 
It's expressive, which I enjoy. It is raised a bit with a chamfer for some separation, and it's just sandblasted, so no protective finish, therefore over time it will patina, which some people love, some people don't. You can see it as a character building thing, or it can look dirty to you. Also, the uh, white bump ones were a nice touch. Now, let's get to the typing experience. I only did a few configs, all include the middle foam piece in between the plate and PCB, and it has a pump plate, so let's have a quick listen. Okay, let's start with all the foam and gaskets included. This is definitely a case of there not being much room for the gaskets to breathe as they are very compressed, and we can see there's not much flex. However, this does provide a bit of a snappier and poppy feel as everything is tighter, so the bottom and top out are sharper, but at the same time quite uh, muted in volume. Um, it is kind of flat, I wouldn't say thocky or particularly clacky, and there's not much depth to it. I do like how the mods feel and sound in this configuration though, especially the spacebar personally, but overall I think I think it's what you'd expect uh, from a fully foamed out board. Then to the next config, if we take out the top gaskets and are left with the bottom ones, we do get more allowance for the gaskets to compress and expand, and this was what was recommended to me, and we can clearly see that flex just by pressing down, Immediately the pitch is slightly lower, we have a slight increase in volume, and there's a bit of reverb introduced. The bottom out is slightly softened, but again a little bit flat feeling, not real thocky or clacky, and still a pretty muted and quiet experience overall. And lastly, taking out the bottom case foam, you can definitely hear a bit of that space underneath and it's, it's definitely the louder setup. I wouldn't say it's really hollow or anything, but in comparison to having that bottom case foam piece, that reverb is more audible. We hear a bit of the sound spill onto the table, and you feel that vibration too, and it, it introduces a bit more clack, and that pitch is brought up, interestingly. So overall, I use the word muted quite a bit. For all of these, the mid foam layer would definitely have an impact, especially together with a pump plate and maybe without it we can get rid of that flatness this has, and keep in mind everything comes into play with sound and feel. 
So this would be quite a bit different to say an alu plate. So if you wanted a muted, firm and flat experience, then this is the go. Weirdly enough, I did actually like it fully packed with all their gaskets. Uh, it, it just had a bit more poppiness to it, even though it for sure goes against what other people like, but I found it very enjoyable. And that's the thing, preference comes into play. And I'm always very open-minded in that regard, and I'll leave it up to you guys to, to form an opinion for yourselves. And again, I only explored a part of what was possible with the plate and switches I have. And that's the Alpine 65 from Bitmap Studios. A solid entry into the market, I like how it looks, and it manages to differentiate itself aesthetically with a few quirks, which I love. Uh, I believe this was their first board, and they delivered it at a reasonable price, which I think was very fair for what we got. But this group buy already ran, and is currently being delivered, so unfortunately you probably won't get your hands on one, but I'm keen to see their future releases because you always learn so much from your first.